Hello people and welcome back to another cycling video but this one's slightly different because I've been restoring this old rally bike it's taken me quite a few weeks and a lot of the dark winter months I've spent in here and I've taken every part of this bike and give it a good clean and so I've initially got the bike stripped it down and rebuilt it I took it for a local ride in the Pennines up England's longest continual climb up Crag Vale and then down Blackstone Edge where I tried to do 40 miles per hour on it. Now this is a 10 speed bike but on the back it's got a 6 speed block which means it's for a 12 speed bike and I found that at 30 miles an hour I was absolutely spinning flat out on this thing so it needed a 5 speed block on the back. But then I got the bug and this bike was stripped down properly again. I've resprayed it, I've spent hours and hours on these wheels getting them straight in the vise, truing them up, wire wool everywhere, getting the rust off and now it's ready to be ridden properly. The Rally Pioneer was launched in 1991, just as mountain bike sales started to drop away, and they are still made today, and they don't appear to have changed that much at first glance. And fans of this bike have often said that a Reynolds 501 frame is one of the better ones. They were also built with high tensile 1823 tubing. So what can I tell you about this bike? Well, it originally came from a bike shop in Oldham called Skidmore's, which is no longer there. And I came across this bike when my mate Andy said, would you mind having a look at it? After he helped me move some furniture on a DIY project at home. But little did I realize I was going to get so heavily involved in restoring this old bike. It's a 10 speed bike, but like I said earlier, it came with a six speed block on the back. And dating this bike has proved to be quite difficult as the serial number did not reveal anything when I did some searches online. Usually for a rally bike you'd find an N for Nottingham or W for Worksop for example. However looking at the drive system on the bike it was fitted with Shimano Tourne front and rear mechs. And on the rear derailleur it came with a stamp mark which was SA. S means 1994 and A means January. So the rear mech was made in January 1994. The front mech had RJ stamps on it, R stands for 93 and J stands for October. So the front mech was made in October 1993. So this bike is specced out with equipment in production from 93 to 94. However the wheels are 27 by inch and a quarter rather than 700c and with it being a 10 speed bike I actually thought it might have been made a bit earlier and the 7 digit serial number had 925 in the sequence so I wasn't sure if this bike was made in 92 with 94 parts or whether it was made in 1995 fitted with 94 parts but anyway let's have a look at the restoration because I've thoroughly enjoyed every part of giving this old bike a new lease of life As having taken the chain off, it was time to give the drive components a thorough degreasing and clean. After that, they were relubed and checked again. The freewheel was then stripped down to every part. They were all cleaned with degreaser and relubed, and then put back together again. And any job like this with ball bearings and parts like that, a magnetic tray is always a very useful tool to have nearby. And the use of an anti-seizure compound will always help for future strip downs. Next we cleaned and serviced the rear wheel axle and bearings, where a magnetic pickup tool makes the job much easier. It's always nice to put plenty of grease in there before the final reassembly. A brass wire wheel attached to your drill or a rotary multi tool really helps to break down all the rust and stubborn oxidisation around the metal parts. The rear wheel in this case had quite a serious flat spot 
it wasn't concentric and wasn't running true. And after a bit of fettling, we got it much better. And it was time to look at the tyres. These are really old and tired. So we found some brand new 27 by inch and a quarter Schwalbe standard active tyres. And new inner tubes to go as well. The crank puller and extraction tool was needed along with some other specialist spanners to remove the chain set and the bottom bracket assembly. And again, a bottle of thinners or degreaser was never too far away to get all the components thoroughly cleaned and looking good again. So here we have the axle and the bottom bracket shells, getting the brush right in there. You want everything to be really nicely cleaned out. And like I said before, it's all about cleaning, drying and re-lubricating everything with grease and making everything good. And the grease that I used here was a Teflon base formula. It's available from most bike shops and places like Holford's. I'm just applying some anti-seizure compound there onto the threads of the bottom bracket shells and the axle a good greasing. And it just becomes a case of getting the whole assembly refitted together and setting the free end play in the bearings. And as a side note, on the drive side, the threads tighten up counterclockwise. And you can see there the free play that needs to be adjusted and we take the free play out and finally tune it and lock it up with a locking ring or a c-spanner before finally refitting the crank set And so next we started to work on the front wheel where again we apply the same principles where we remove the cone, the axle, use the magnetic pickup tool to take out the bearings, degrease everything, clean everything, put it all back together. Ready for the next part of this restoration. The steering assembly was taken apart next and on this bike it was a threaded headset system with a quill stem which are quite easy to adjust for height and bearing free play. And as you can see here with some basic tools you can strip it right down to every component ready for a service and a clean. And here is the assembly and in order we've got number one the plastic cover then number two the lock nut number three the brake cable hanger number four is the lock spacer number five the metal cover number six is the bearing race and finally the top and bottom bearings of the assembly and you can see here the bearings are cleaned again in degreaser and the same grease was used as on all the other moving parts of the bike so that was a steering and headset all ready to go And so at this stage of the rebuild, we were almost there, and it was just time to have a quick look at the brakes. Now these are Lee Chai cantilever brakes. So I gave things a nice little clean with a rotary brass wire brush, and some of these oxidised parts started to look like new again. And likewise with the front reflector, everything was made to look nice and clean, ready for the bike ride. And final checks, and that's a little bit of OCD there, just cleaning the chain thoroughly again in between each link and lubricating every link with wet chain oil. And with the gears indexing nicely, it was time to get out there and give it a ride. I'm a cyclist and I live in the Pennines and welcome to my channel. 
And today, we're on a classic old rally bike. So the plan is to go and ride this classic old Rally Pioneer Spirit bike up England's longest continual climb, Cragvale, and see if it'll do over 40 miles an hour down Blackstone Edge. And if I can achieve both of them, I'm really happy. And I've really enjoyed taking this thing apart, cleaning it, getting the rust off it, greasing it, lubing it, you name it, to try and make it rideable and give an old bike some new life. Well, so far, I'm really liking it. It's extremely comfy. It's a steel frame, 501, Renault's 501, um, 10 speed, and it's also SIS. Loving it, comfy, practical, and it'll shift if you want it to shift. We're doing 20 miles an hour here. And so yeah, like I say, it's a good old iron horse. It's not supposed to be ridden and like a racing bike at all. It's like a commuting bike. Um, you know, you've got your flat bars, the gear changes are really difficult to use, but it's all about getting the feel for the bike. And I've really enjoyed this project. It's all about getting something that was built to work, to do its job, and in this case, bring it back to life. And it's just purring along. The chain sounds lovely, it's been cleaned, oiled. Just enjoying it. And so the only thing I've got doubts about are the brakes. Because if I want to be doing 40 miles an hour down Blackstone Edge, these brakes won't slow me down quick enough. Well, we're in Soberden now. Six miles. Um, the saddle is extremely comfy. The gearing is very low. 25 miles an hour, I'm doing about 95 revs a minute. Um, not a problem though. The handling's good, the actual steering for low speed on a commute, getting around a town. I like the steering, very sensitive. We're in a busy Hebden Bridge now. Not doing too bad, but on 10 miles, 38 minutes, averaging 16 mile an hour. So on the flat, this thing will do 18 and 19 miles an hour. And I've noticed at 23, 24, I'm spinning. So here we are, bottom of Crag Vale, England's longest continual climb. It rises 970 feet, over five and a half miles. So let's give it a go. On this bike, the Rally Pioneer Spirit, 10 speed. So we're on Crag Vale now. Um, this is what you call the steep bit. So I'm on the smallest front ring, which is a 38, and on the back is a 28. And I can get up here without having to stand up on the pedals. I can sit down and we can do it. So the gears on the bike are 48, 38 on the front and a 28, 16 on the back. So that's it now, I've no more gears left, but um, they're low enough just to get you up most of these climbs. We're now on the real open moorland section and I'm in the third gear down, don't know what that is, on the small chain ring at the front. Bit of a headwind here now. So let's talk about tyres and they're not easy to find in your local bike shop. Today we're on 700 C's normally for road bikes and these are 27 by inch and a quarter. So I've got some Schwalbe standard tyres, 40 pound for the pair, reasonable. They're probably worth more than the bike. But I wanted to go for something with more puncture protection than the cheaper ones on eBay for 20 quid a pair. Okay, here we are, the descent of Blackstone Edge. Gone a bit foggy up here, it's cold. And we've got a headwind. But let's see what this old bike will do. There's the White House pub on the right. And that's top gear. No more gears. We're now spinning quite a lot. That's 30 miles an hour. That's really spinning. So at 30 miles an hour, my cadence will be 123 revs per minute. God, I'm flat out. 34, 
and saw 34 miles per hour was 139 RPM. 33.5 miles an hour. It's nice and smooth. Let's try and go quicker. Oh, 37. That's hard work. So that's now a cadence of 152 to hit 37 miles per hour. It was so hard. I desperately needed that 14th tooth cog on the back. 36 miles an hour. Oh. But this bike is so heavy and it rolls really well in that tucked position. That's 35 miles an hour. It's holding good speed. And at this stage now, I was really feeling these efforts I was putting in. In fact, I was miles more out of breath going down this hill than I was going up the Crag Vale. But I was desperate to get to that 40 miles per hour mark. I'll have to have one big blast. Okay, we'll go for it down here now. Come on! Come on! Come on! Uh, 39! I think that's really hard. That's 37 miles an hour. Oh! That's a lot of effort. Oh! I get my breath back. Really hard work. 35 mile an hour. Have I got room for one more? Yeah. Oh, 37. Can't get any more. Oh, my God. Oh. Ah. Wow. Ah. That was really, really hard work. Oh, oh, them efforts then. You really are putting in the effort to make this bike go quick. Oh, it's got the totally the wrong gears. Totally the wrong gears to try and go quick. Oh, I think flat out there, 37. I'll check on the maximum speed in a minute. But I loved it. Oh yeah. Well, I can't believe it. We've hit 39.82, nearly 40 miles an hour. So there you have it and that's where we are with this bike so far. It's still work in progress and 39.82 miles per hour, I'm going back up Blatson Edge and I'm getting 40 out of this bad boy. So stay tuned for that one. So we're going to end the video at this point, but there's still some more work to be done and I'll make another video all about that. And so what I've done, I've resprayed all the silver on the bike. It's had new graphics and decals put on. The handlebars have been sprayed. I've got a nice new bracket modification on here for my Garmin GPS. New saddle, new seat post. Plus we've added a front mech, a rear mech and some new brakes. So this bike is doing really well and it's cost me a small fortune to say the least. And this arrived through the post today. And that is a classic 1980s bike pump, which I'm going to fit on here because I've got the brackets for that as well and it'll look just like it came from 1992 out of that shop in Oldham at Skidmore's. But if you want me to make more of these kind of videos with this bike, I've got loads of ideas and let me know in the comments below. And I'm sure we can make things happen with this bike. I think it needs to go on a sportive ride as well. So anyway, that's where we're up to. Please stay tuned and it's work in progress. And thank you for watching. Come on, we can do this. And the brakes seem to be working all right as well, yeah.